This is Crucial's new DDR5 Pro RAM, specifically for overclocking. There's no RGB, the focus is all on performance. The kit I have here runs at 6000 mega transfers per second and offers an impressive 36, 38, 38, 80 primary timing set. It'll also work with both the latest Intel and AMD chips and supports both XMP 3.0 and AMD Expo. Crucial were kind enough to send over two 32 gig kits for me to test with here, so I should probably explain what we're testing. The speed your RAM runs at is a pretty important factor for how games perform. How quickly your CPU can access data stored in RAM can be the difference between a smooth gaming experience and a more stilted one. Some chips are much more memory sensitive, or certainly sensitive to speed than others, so let's see how this 14600K does with this high speed RAM. It's worth noting here that by enabling XMP or just by manually setting your RAM to a speed above 5600 mega transfers per second, Intel considers that a warranty voiding action. Whether or not they would enforce that is an issue that's up for debate, but according to the letter of the law here, running the memory at anything faster than 5600 mega transfers per second is something that Intel considers overclocking and will therefore void your warranty. With that said, this is a review sample chip, so I've already voided whatever warranty it may or may not have come with, so let's get to test it. To keep things simple, I'll be using the same kit between each of the tests, rather obviously, and I'll only be making changes in the BIOS to set speeds. I'll be using the primary XMP profile for the 6000 mega transfer per second test, which is 1.35 volts and all of the standard timings, and I'll use the second XMP profile, the 5600 mega transfer per second profile, for the rest, and just change the transfer speeds down to 5200 and 4800 between. The timings are staying the same, and I'm specifically using XMP mode 2, which uses the full XMP profile, rather than letting the ASUS uh, Z790 Strix eboard that I'm using decide any of the uh, other timings. I know that this isn't a perfect methodology, but it's the best I can do. It's also uh, worth noting that I'm using an RTX 3070 here because, well, that's the top end card I pretty much have, and I'm testing at 1440p, as that's what I would expect a gamer who has a 14600K and a 3070 to be gaming at. Right, with that said, what are the results? Well, in CS2 on low settings, there is a fairly marked difference in performance here. Well, the differences in the averages are pretty significant, upwards of 35 FPS between 4800 and 6000, the 1% and 0.1% are what are most interesting to me. Going from 178 FPS to 191 FPS in the 1% lows is actually pretty significant, and going from 132 to 146 in the 0.1% lows was even more so. As I somewhat expected, in a more CPU limited game like this, memory speed is more likely to be a factor in performance, and one of the, the sort of big catches is the smoothness. Uh, slower RAM can bring more hitching and stuttering. It seems like if you want to play CS on a modern i5, higher RAM speed is well worth it. Cyberpunk, however, is a different kettle of fish entirely. All four of the setups performed functionally identically, at least in the averages. Every result is under one FPS difference, making for one of the tightest spreads in my testing. The 1% lows do stray slightly by a whole one FPS, uh, there isn't much else in it, and the 1% lows are not 1% lows either. My suspicion here is that Cyberpunk is a rather GPU intensive game, and while I'm sure that there are some niche circumstances that would mean you'd see a bigger difference here, in this setup, the, the CPU, and specifically the memory speed, does, just doesn't have that much of an impact. It turns out that's the same for Shadow of the Tomb Raider 2, where every result is within half an FPS on average, 
and just as close in the 1% and 0.1% lows. This really doesn't care about the CPU and RAM speed. Fortnite does provide an admittedly slight difference, going from 152 FPS average to an astonishing 155. <laughs> the 1% lows do seem to suggest that the 6000 mega transfer per second setup offers a smoother experience though. There isn't all that much in it between them though, it really isn't a big difference. Microsoft Flight, on the other hand, shows a bit more of a significant difference where running at 4800 mega transfers per second nets just shy of 100 FPS versus the full 6000 giving you 105. It is only a 6 FPS spread, but that isn't bad for just a touch faster RAM. The 1% lows are equally improved, although I should note that there is functionally no difference between 5600 and 6000 here, in average 1% lows or not 1% lows. Hitman is by far the most interesting test here though, as the built-in benchmark provides both CPU and GPU frame times, and I'm showing the CPU side here. When we focus on more sort of the CPU data exclusively, we can see how big a difference is possible. You're looking at almost 10 FPS on average, going from 156 to 164 FPS. And more importantly, it seems there's a pretty linear scale between RAM speed and more performance. Of course, you can go higher. There are like 7,600 mega transfer per second kits available already, but within this spread, it seems pretty linear. The same goes for the 1% lows, where 6,000 mega transfers per second gets you over 100 FPS versus 95, 94, or even 93 in descending order. Even the 0-1% lows show the same trend, albeit with a smaller overall spread of around 6 FPS. As for Rainbow Six Siege, well, much like CS2, it's an esports title that runs at hundreds of frames per second. Because it's less intensive on the graphics card, uh, changes to the CPU, and in this case memory, can offer more sizable differences. That's pretty clear from the data, where the at 6,000 mega transfers per second, you get a 418 FPS average versus 405 FPS uh, with 4,800 mega transfers per second. You aren't likely to notice that difference though, and honestly, uh, looking at the 1% and not 1% numbers, you aren't likely to notice those differences all that much either. Still, it gives you the idea, in higher performance titles like this, or even extrapolating to something like Valorant, higher speed RAM can give you more performance. As you might expect though, Starfield brings us back to the not much going on camp, where at least on the average and 1% low results, there really isn't all that much of a difference. The only noticeable jump is in the 0-1% lows, where we've gained almost 10 FPS, going from 4800 to 6000 mega transfers per second, making for a smoother experience for sure, but really there isn't that much in it. If we look at the average of all of these results, you can see that there is a slight advantage to having faster RAM, although there really isn't much in it. The average does improve by almost 10 FPS, going from 4800 to 6000, although there's only 2 FPS between 5600 and 6000, so really not much there. The 1% lows do also improve to the tune of 6 FPS across these 8 games, but really that isn't a huge difference. The same goes for the 0-1% lows too. To view this another way, here is the percentage improvements over the 4800 results, specifically the average FPS. The best case here is that you get around 4% more performance, which while still nothing to you know, stick your nose up at, realistically you weren't comparing 4800 and 6000 mega transfers per second RAM. You're comparing 5600 to 6000, and there you get functionally no usable improvements. On paper, there is a difference, but it wouldn't be what you would call statistically significant. Rounding up then, it looks like, at least with the configuration that I'm using here, there isn't all that much of a difference. It is worth getting higher speed RAM, although it seems the benefits are somewhat limited when you go over the rated max speed of, at least in this case, 5600. 
Although, if I'm being honest, this doesn't surprise me much. Your CPU matters an awful lot less than your graphics card does when it comes to gaming. Sure, a faster CPU will often give you more performance, even out of the same GPU, but it's quite rare that a single CPU swap will net you a truly massive performance swing. Whereas swapping your GPU for a tier or two up will almost certainly net you a bunch more performance in a really noticeable way. So it stands to reason then that your RAM speed won't be a seismic, sh seismic shift in performance either. That also doesn't mean that you shouldn't get some fast RAM like this. It generally doesn't cost much more, if at all, to get this sort of speed and latency, and there is performance on the table here. So yeah, get some faster RAM, but know that it isn't going to rock your world. If you happen to be interested in picking up some faster RAM, I'll leave a link to this crucial kit in the description down below. Otherwise, if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button, check out plenty of other videos and they pop up on the end cards in a second. You can also pick up the hardware that I make myself, the open source latency testing tool and response time testing tool at osrtt.com. And there's a load of other links in the description if you want to support the channel and keep me making videos like this. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.